It may seem almost incredulous that this reviewer has never until now played Skyrim. As viewers who have watched some of the other videos on this channel will note, many of the games reviewed and talked about are role-playing games, and in the past this reviewer has made it very clear that he holds Fallout 4 in high regard. For it seemed that as many times as I had started and completely played Fallout 4 all the way through, including the Far Harbor and Nuka World expansions, was as many times as I started Skyrim and simply stopped playing. Often this was because of other games, games to be replayed and reviewed, or online games that required attention. Ironically then, it was because this reviewer had embarked on yet another playthrough of Fallout 4 that this time he was determined to see what all of the fuss was about, with a game that had failed to grab his attention sufficiently to have played it already. Perhaps the problem had been the way that both games begin. Although Skyrim has a fairly dramatic beginning, it isn't as flamboyant or as spectacular as Fallout 4's. Both games soon reach a point where the player has absolute freedom to do what they wish, but that point is much more defined in Fallout 4, the point where you leave the vault, than within Skyrim. This point in the game though, proved to be the key that opened the door to Skyrim for this reviewer, as after so many playthroughs having become accustomed to exploring in Fallout 4, this time around that exploration and true sense of freedom that is inherent in all of the best single player role playing games such as Dragon Age and The Witcher 3 opened up what can only be described as one of the most extraordinary gaming experiences you can play. Skyrim is immense, varied, beautiful, majestic, dark and horrific and constantly surprising. Its varied and masterfully sculpted open world environment is often a stunning and dramatic backdrop to a multitude of places to explore and discover. From dank creepy crypts, to overrun stone forts, to icy caves, to magical ancient underground complexes, to unique cityscapes, from plains, to mountainsides, to icy sea beaches, there is just so much to see and do. This isn't to mention the deluge of different main quests, side quests, miscellaneous quests and random encounters, ranging from the simplest of fetch quests to the most elaborate and epic adventures this player has experienced in a long time. Many of the game's best moments are against spectacular level design ideas. Of course, Skyrim is starting to look graphically dated, but the special edition has done a lot to bring the game close to the quality of Fallout 4. It isn't quite as sharp in fidelity, but it still manages to convey its more majestic level design ideas well. Character models are very well animated, but their appearance isn't the best you will find. Gameplay is solid enough, combat is extremely flexible and varied. There are no restrictions to what you wield or how you equip your character, as there are no character classes. Instead, an intriguing skill system allows you to develop those skills and abilities you use the most faster than others. These skills, such as using one-handed weapons or lockpicking, level up as you use them. This awards you experience points, which you can add to experience points earned through combat and completing quests. Once you have enough experience points you level up and are able to improve one of your core stats, magic, health or stamina, and also to choose a perk from a range of skills, many of which you will have been improving. This allows players to tailor their character builds to reflect their favourite way to approach gameplay. Of course no game is perfect and one of Skyrim's biggest inherent problems is with the scripting of companion AI that you will be able to acquire in the game. Due to the varied and often rugged terrain of Skyrim, AI often gets stuck or are unable to follow you. This means that you may, like this player, begin to adjust your approach to traversal in new areas. So for example, instead of leaving a road and clambering down a mountainside, checking whether the AI is actually following you and perhaps just sticking to the road. Of course, you can ignore the AI and they often self-correct, 
but sometimes they disappear for unsettling periods of time only to give you a heart attack as they reappear behind you in a creepy tomb. Although Skyrim doesn't have settlement building, the special edition does allow you to build manors and this is a really fun activity that helps you stamp your place on the world. This is in addition to being able to purchase properties in most of the major cities. A major part of what makes Skyrim such an alluring and special experience is the incredible original soundtrack composed by Jeremy Soule. Easily on par with Inon Zer's take of a nuclear wasteland, Soul's magical foreboding themes fill the world of Skyrim with an effervescent magical force. Many may assume that Skyrim is a lighter and more whimsical world than Fallout 4's, but this is not the case, as the world of Skyrim can be just as dark and foreboding. It is though, as the game director Todd Howard has described, tonally different to Fallout. After one month and over 120 hours of gameplay, this reviewer certainly has learnt what all of that fuss was about. Skyrim is without a shadow of a doubt one of the greatest single player role playing video games ever made, simultaneously both a perfect counter and complement to Fallout 4. It is no wonder that Skyrim continues to hold the attention and entertain so many players even now, a full decade later. Yol Kur Shul.